Good morning, SSIS. I'm Caitlin. And my name is Lauren. In today's newscast, we will be covering the topic of South Sudan. In recent events, the government of South Sudan has begun to take steps to prevent starvation. Already about 3.4 million people in South Sudan are facing the dangers of starvation, and soon the whole region of Sudan will starve for not having enough resources. At the moment, there's a civil war happening with Sudan and South Sudan. Because of that, it is possible that South Sudan's starvation is mostly due to its premature independence and the fact that it does not have the governmental leadership or power to provide the basic community to its people. The civil war is also a factor that contributes to Sudanese citizens trying to all leave the country. People run from the soldiers, and even with the South Sudanese army trying to hold off the Sudanese soldiers, people in South Sudan are still at risk. However, Sudan is not the only country encountering these difficulties. Refugees from other countries are leaving their own home to escape their own complications by entering Sudan. In today's news task, one of our reporters, Nan Pin, will interview two refugees, one fleeing from Sudan and the other residing in Sudan. And soon, we will be showing some footage of refugees and the local refugee camps. Hi, I'm Nan. I'm at the Ethiopia refugee camp, and sitting next to me is someone that is currently taking refuge here. Hi, what is your name? My name is Lillian. Nice to meet you, Lillian. Where are you from? I'm from Sudan, South Sudan. Cool. Why did you flee here from Sudan? Well, as you know, Sudan doesn't have food. It's a pretty poor cool country, and without food, I'm gonna die. And Family. No. What was the worst and the best aspect of your journey? It wasn't the best. The worst was that I lost my sister. And that asylum check, it was exhausting. I don't want to do it again. What about your family already, say? Like I said, my sister. I haven't heard from her ever since she has been held back. I'm sorry to hear about that. How did you feel when you arrived at the refugee camp and why? I was exhausted. I missed my relatives. I was tired, but at the same time, I felt relieved. I'm finally going to be able to eat again. I haven't had any food for the longest time. Thank you very much for, for coming here and sharing your experience, and I hope that you would find happiness. Thanks, Lan. Now, reporter Lan will now move to a different location to interview another refugee that is leaving his country to enter Sudan. Back to you, Lan. Thank you, Lauren. I am now with a different refugee. Hi, what is your name? My name is Olafunke Mutokedo. Nice to meet you, Olafunke. Where are you from? I was originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but now, as you can see, I fled to Sudan. But I think it is much safer and calmer compared to my home country. I'm impressed how fast I checked in, though. What is the situation that makes you flee here? And what, it, what do you think is safer here? I was living in an eastern province called Oriental, where terrorists and militants led by military officers have been trying to overthrow government in attempts to gain control of the country. I was displaced and then I fled to Sudan. I think that Sudan isn't doing so well, but I'd rather be here than face death every single day. What was the worst and the best aspect of your journey? The worst aspect was probably having to face all the dangers. For example, I had to take a bus to the border and we were ambushed by soldiers. They pulled us and we made it out. We also had to make our way on foot after the bus broke down in the jungle. When I got to the asylum application center, I was worried I was going to be rejected, but I made it through. The best part was probably getting to the refugee camp because I was going to be finally safe. When I got there, 
I admit I was a bit disappointed that the conditions were this bad. We had to sit around in tents and searing a hundred degree heat, but it was better than nothing. What about your family? Are they safe? My family had managed to flee the, the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but they've not come here to Sudan. They're in a refugee camp somewhere like this. I haven't written or heard from them in a while, so I hope someday I'll be able to meet them again. What did you feel when you get here and why? I felt relieved because after all, I was finally safe and sound. I only hope that soon news will come saying that the skirmishes have stopped in the Congo and I will be able to go back in. But other than that, I can't complain here much. The emails today, it's pretty much fine. However, I like that we get to do work like construction because what would it be just sitting around and doing nothing whatsoever? I mean, even though we're refugees, we have to make a difference. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing your story. I hope you get the best of luck. And bye. Goodbye. Thanks, Nan. You did a great job. And thank you guys for joining us with Nasus News. See you next time with more facts from Sudan. Once again, this is Caitlin and Lauren reporting from Nasus News. Good night and thank you.